human biology at UWA can be really easy if you do three things. Cite while you write, catalogue your references as you go, and bust common referencing myths. I'm Siri from Study Smarter at the University of Western Australia. And I'm Graham from Information Services. And we're going to show you how to make referencing easy for yourself using the UWA Harvard Citation Style. Citing while you're writing may not sound exciting, but it does make referencing a cinch. Citing means showing how you've used other people's ideas. Straight after their ideas, put authors' family names and the dates they came up with their ideas in brackets. Or make the author part of your sentence, followed by the date in brackets. It's as simple as that. That's right, Siri. And for quotes, add a page reference. Use the short forms P full stop for page and PP full stop for pages. Many lecturers also want page references for close paraphrases, so if you're not sure what to do, please check with them. Longer details go in a reference list at the end. We'll look at this in a minute, but first let's discuss a few questions that students commonly ask. One is about when to include the author as part of the sentence. How would you advise them, Siri? Good question, Graham. I'd use this style to make an author seem more important or prominent. I'd also use it in an extended summary so that I could mix in he or she pronouns with names. And finally, I'd use it to introduce a debate in the literature or some new or surprising idea fact or finding. Well, what about the other style, the one with both the author's family name and the date within the brackets? I'd use this if the information was what I wanted to be important or prominent, and I'd use it for facts and ideas that are widely accepted or that I agree with. This information prominence style is common in human biology as it focuses readers' attention on information, facts and ideas. Thanks, Siri. In the examples we're looking at here, there's only one author for each work. Graham, students also often ask us what to do if there's more than one author. What do you tell them? For two authors, list both family names in the same order as they appear in the original work. I'd do the same thing for three authors as well. And it's interesting, isn't it? When the authors are part of the sentence, you use the word and to join the last two names. But when they're in brackets, you use an ampersand instead. Yes, it is, Siri. In fact, a lot of the time when things are in brackets, we can use short forms or symbols where we'd normally use words. There's another short form that's useful, et al. It stands for the Latin et alia, meaning and others. We use et al when we have four authors or more, listing the first author and then writing et, et, al, full stop, reduces clutter in our sentences. Interesting, Graham. I've got one more question about authors. What if there's no author listed for a work? What you do in this case, Siri, is to use the organisation's name, or if there isn't one, the title of the work. Thanks, Graham. Another thing students often ask about is where to find the date for the citation. That's a good question, because it's not always as easy as it sounds. If you're using a book, you generally find copyright information in the first few pages of the book. Look for the copyright symbol and the word copyright. What you need is, when the edition you're using was published, ignore the dates of previous editions and ignore the dates of any reprints as well. For journal articles, you usually find the date on the first page beside the journal title and the volume and the issue number if there is one. And on websites, there's often copyright information at the bottom of the page. Note the most recent update date. What about if you can't find a date or if there's none listed, Graham? Well, if there's no date listed anywhere, write the short form N full stop, D full stop, meaning no date. Great. Graham, let's take a look at single and double quotes next. What should students use? It's confusing because in the US, double quotation marks are generally used. And in the UK, it's the opposite. And in Australia, some people seem to use double quotation marks, others use single ones. What would you advise? I always advise just to stick with one style for quotes and to be consistent. 
Then use the opposite style for quotes within quotes or to show you using a term in a particular way. We do also get students asking us how to shorten quotes. Good point, Graham. An easy way to do this is to use an ellipsis or three full stops in place of words you leave out. What about when a quote is unclear because the context is missing? Just pop explanatory text in, in square brackets. Graham, with the UWA Harvard style, there's also a 30-word rule about quotes, isn't there? Yes, Siri. Don't put quotation marks around long quotes. Instead, indent them with spaces above and below. Consider also using a smaller font size for the quote. That's very helpful. I guess you'd want to keep long and even short quotes to a minimum, though. Well, that's exactly right. As a general rule of thumb, quotes should be less than 10% of your word count. This means you need to paraphrase, and that can take a bit of practice, can't it? Yes, it can, but it's easier if you read for overall meaning. Focus on important nouns and technical words. Think of different ways of combining these. You'll usually find there are several ways to change sentence structure. Keep going until your sentence is as different as possible from the original, but still has the same basic meaning. As we've seen, citing while you're writing is simple once you know a few basic referencing conventions, and it helps to practice paraphrasing as much as you can. Another useful tip is to catalogue your references as you go. Do this on a separate page at the end of your text. Write references at the top, and then expand on each of your earlier citations. With the UWA Harvard citation style, each reference begins with the first listed author's family name, and you can put the list as a whole in alphabetical order. There are no numbers, bullet points or indents, just a single space between entries. Siri, do you have any tricks for remembering what to include in the reference entries? Yes, I do, Graham. I think of them all as containing who, when, what, where information. If we look at the reference for a book, for example, we start off with who wrote the book, then when it was published, next what it's called, including any subtitles, and finally, where others can find the book, which edition number, publisher, and city of publication. Does this who, when, what, where method work for you as well, Graham? Yes, Siri, I think it does. A print journal article reference also starts with who, when, and what. Then it tells us where we can find the article, which journal, volume, issue number if applicable, and pages. An electronic journal article provides the same who, when, what information. The where information also tells us what database to find the article in, and when you last looked at it there. If the journal wasn't hosted on a database, you'd include the URL instead, just like you do for the website listing, which has the same who, when, what, and where format. Thanks, Siri. That works really well. For more examples, please check out the UWA Harvard Citation Guide on the Information Services website. It gives you heaps more information on in-text citations and references and shows you examples of how to format these correctly. Graham, to finish off, let's look briefly at five common perceptions about referencing and see if we can bust any myths. The first one is that if all of the ideas in a paragraph come from the same source, you can simply put an in-text citation at the end of the paragraph. Is this true, Graham? No, it's false. If all the information comes from one place, you've got to make this clear right from the start and use reminder phrases throughout your paragraph so the reader can see the ideas are still from the same source. Siri, some students think they should leave off some citations as too many citations will clutter up their writing and it will look like they don't have any ideas of their own. Is that true? No, definitely not. Citations show you've done your research and make your own writing seem more credible. While it's good to include your own ideas as well, you must reference ideas you take from elsewhere. Graham, I don't know if you've heard this, but something I often hear is that you should put one citation per sentence right at the end, 
What do you think about this? That's false and false again. You need to put citations in wherever it makes sense. You might, for example, include one person's ideas at the beginning of the sentence, another person's ideas in the middle, and someone else's ideas at the end. So citations can come at the beginning, middle, and end of the sentence. Some students also think you should only use one source to support each idea. And I'd have to say, this is false too. If you've read the same idea in multiple sources, you list all of the sources that support that idea, or at least the key ones, alphabetically and separate these with semicolons. Graham, a final thing that I've heard about is that if you haven't read someone's original work, you can't cite it. What do you reckon about this? It sounds logical, Siri, and it's always a good idea to read someone's original work where you can, but I have to say that this too is false. There may be times when you can't get hold of someone's original work, and if this is the case, you can list two names. The name of the originator of the idea, followed by cited in, and then the name and date of the reference that you've looked at. Here's a couple of different ways to do this. So Siri, that concludes our video on referencing in human biology at UWA. Yes, thanks for that, Graham. We hope that our viewers have found it helpful. And you remember, you can make referencing easy for yourself if you do these three things. Cite while you write, catalog references as you go, and bust common referencing myths. If you'd like more help with referencing and writing, check out the UWA Information Services website, which we've already mentioned. And take a look at the Study Smarter website, too. It's got lots of resources to help. And of course, you can come along and see us in person at our Write Smart drop-in sessions. We run these between 10 and 12 weekdays during the main weeks of semester. You'll find us in the basement of the Reed Library on UWA's main campus in Crawley. If you're a UWA student, you can access our free, friendly expert advice on writing from me, Siri, and my colleagues from Study Smarter. And fantastic assistance developing referencing skills from me, Graham, and the other UWA Information Services librarians. You can also access one-page survival guides on referencing, writing and research topics at Write Smart drop-ins from displays in the library or on our website. And while you're on YouTube, check out our other videos to help you with your study. Good luck with your referencing and we hope to see you soon.